Roll call, please. Okay, Mr. Peterson, Miss Huffman, Miss Madriga, Mr. Brightling, Mr. Johnner, and Mr. Wilson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, everyone. First action we need to do is approve the prior meeting minutes. Look for a motion to approve, amend, discuss. Is there a second, please? Move and second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. aye. Let's pull the same sign. Motion passes. Uh, item two on our agenda is the RFPs for a couple projects. I think we're all aware of them, but Mr. Wilson, if you would, could you please run through A and B for me? Absolutely. I, I probably will flip-flop uh, B and, and then A, uh, just because the commission has already uh, acted on, uh, on B and, uh, and will take up A this afternoon. B is the uh, RFP for the jail capacity um, uh, review and then uh, kind of conceptual uh, high-level design budget estimate, square footage uh, estimate. Uh, the intent being very similar to the way we approached the uh, jail intake expansion. And uh, I, um, I've, I've had a couple of reach outs recently. We were, we were also trying to move that one forward uh, uh, on a shorter timeline because uh, really the, the sheriff's office has expressed some pretty um, urgent needs to get this project going. And, and uh, I don't think anybody is uh, under Im any impression that, the, that this is gonna be a quick project. This is probably a couple of years at, at least, uh, but, but getting the, the, the project underway is, is important nonetheless. So we, um, uh, uh, Ms. Madriga and I were, were in a process of updating uh, really the format that we use for uh, RFPs. And uh, I, I would say Brandy uh, did the work on it of, of incorporating it. So bravo to you for a, a very nice format that we'll see in the other one. But this one we, we tried to push out with the, uh, the previous format. I think it, uh, it, it's uh, a little more uh, brief. Uh, and, uh, but uh, we, we have noticed that there is a date discrepancy on there. It is uh, listed as um, Friday the 22nd. Next Monday is the 22nd, so we do need to issue a clarification on that. The, uh, the intent all the way along was to, to have that, uh, have them due by the, the 22nd. Uh, but we've also had a couple of, um, uh, of vendors reach out to us, ask for a little more time. And, and I don't think that's inappropriate because it's a, it's a pretty, uh, uh, it, it's a big ask. Uh, it's not a, it's not a simple ask that we're, uh, that we're requesting. And so I think we will um, probably look to extend that to uh, maybe the Monday, uh, a week post Thanksgiving, just to give uh, every uh, qualified bidders the opportunity to do the research they want to do uh, to provide the best, uh, the best product. Um, you know, it, again, I, I think that's just uh, uh, being smart about uh, undertaking a big project. So we, we will uh, forward that, uh, that update and, and look for um, uh, feedback as, it, uh, uh, as it's presented. Stand by for any questions, or I can move on to the uh, the other one. Committee members, any questions? So just to share with this committee, uh, one of the things I've been, so this has been a project we've discussed for years, and this is my pleasure off and on. Uh, I contend we don't need it, but I'm not resistant enough to at least go out and look to find out what it may cost, what size it may be. I think uh, when we get done, we'll be astonished at the shock and scale of what this thing will be, especially given the fact we're going to use it for two weeks every other year, being the training portion of it. I think there's better ways to do this. There's better we're, ways we're to run the jail. Oh, sorry. Run the jail. One. You flipped on me. I, d I did. Okay. Yep. I, <laughs> I was already getting to A, and I actually heard you say that too, by the way. <laughs> so go ahead. If any okay. questions, committee members, if not, A. Are, are there any? No. Are, are there any questions on on B before I go back to go back to A? <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, you keep me on my toes. Go for it. Uh, so B is the one that um, uh, we utilized the new RFP format on, and uh, 
uh, should uh, uh, reach out and say thank you to uh, Mr. Benson with Highway because we, we borrowed liberally from, uh, from your RFP format for, uh, for that and it, it's, uh, it's worked well. And, and again, I think we'll use that, that format um, moving forward because it, uh, it nicely packages up the, the full context of, of projects. Um, but this is a, uh, a project that, as you mentioned, has been discussed in a number of circles over a, a fairly considerable length of time. And, and uh, Mr. Montplaisir, former um, finance director, was a, was a proponent of this project before he left. Uh, I, I know a number of the points that he often highlighted when he was talking about the project is the, um, well, well it, it, I, it, just viewing it, it's a large space that is, that is rented when you are um, actually having to um, pull the machines out of kind of their storage capacity, open them up, run through testing, do uh, uh, install updates. Um, you, you can't do that with any more than a small fraction of the overall uh, uh, machines um, without running out of room in the, in the facility. I think in practical terms, what often happens is that uh, the machines are loaded up from the storage unit, taken to a hotel ballroom, um, set up, tested, new tra uh, training with uh, temporary employees is, uh, uh, is conducted, um, packaged up again, uh, taken back to the storage unit, and then deployed a second time for uh, when they actually have to be deployed for elections. Um, a lot of this handling and, and work in the building is done in uh, um, summer, spring and summer months when it's quite hot in a metal building without air conditioning. Um, and a, a considerable number of the employees that are there are, uh, are temporary employees. And I think that uh, under the best of circumstances, the county has uh, uh, challenges of, uh, of recruiting the, the temporary employees that are needed um, to, uh, to complete the election task. Uh, this, this building would, uh, not only would provide semi-climate controlled environment for storage of, um, uh, computer-based, uh, voting equipment that is now only about a year and a half old, I believe, purchased by the state. Um, uh, it is, um, you know, is, is a, would be conducive to uh, a training room and storage facility all on site, um, more efficient, uh, and, and just a all around better work environment. While we got into these discussions, we also um, um, recognized that um, storage needs of the, uh, uh, the finance office are not the only uh, current storage needs. Uh, Mr. Benson has a highway storage building out on the east side of the property that is a, a very substantial storage uh, building, but about a third of it at this point is, uh, is utilized for uh, various pieces of law enforcement equipment. Uh, and, you know, I, I think uh, um, highway department is very generous to loan their space. I think the uh, um, sheriff's office is very appreciative of that, but they also have some concerns that their equipment uh, has considerable amount of uh, um, high-tech and, and rather uh, uh, electronic-based equipment that that isn't great for being stored in a, uh, a storage unit that just by by nature of the work done has dust and dirt and gravel and exhaust and and and, and things out there. So the the concept here would be a combined um, storage unit and election training uh, facility that, that would be, if it makes some sense, sort of a center area that is a office uh, or classroom meeting space. And then on one wing would be um, election storage and another, the other wing would be um, law enforcement storage. So we've, it's a much talked about uh, project. It was discussed during budget uh, hearings last summer um, and this is just the really the, the logical next step of bring it forward to get some uh, RFP published that would um, answer some of these the, these baseline questions. 
how big does it need to be? What are some of the amenities it's going to exact amenities? What is the square footage? What's a, what's a, what's a cost estimate? As well as then developing building plans. So there would, um, at, at the conclusion of this work, if the, uh, it's uh, uh, approved, then uh, there would, that would still require an additional step to um, engage a, uh, a general contractor and any subs that are needed and, and construct the building. So this is that initial sort of uh, uh, initial high level feasibility look and then also the development of bu uh, building plans. Stand by for questions. Members, you heard my thoughts prior. I stand by them, as I said before. I think there's better ways to do this. I don't think it's needed. I think you could argue to some degree, this is just me talking, uh, that the sheriff does need additional storage. I like the idea that we have these multi-purpose spaces. I know it's not convenient for our engineers. Uh, and stuff that runs through swamps and ditches and trailers that are designed to go through snow and mud, uh, getting some dust on them is not catastrophic because they're built for that. Uh, but at least I can understand uh, the mobility needs and flexibility at the highway department to some degree, at least enough to study it. Uh, I think once we get the diversion built, the need for your building in terms of sandbagging and sheltering, the building will become superfluous. We'll have this giant extra concrete box with nothing left to do. And I know you can put equipment in it, and that's fine. But again, it's equipment designed to be sitting outside, uh, running for the worst developments. I know we want to get into a piece of warm equipment, or we want to make sure it's warm. So again, it is what it is. That building's built. But uh, beyond that, I do think it's prudent for both the jail and this uh, to be looked at. I have no problem looking at them. We need to figure out what they may be. I think, as I said prior, we'll be shocked at just how big this other building's gonna be because government buildings tend to swell, right? I wanna know, when I'll say this, <clears throat> it'll probably get through this committee and get to the commission, so look for me saying this. I wanna know how many of us have put a, an addition on our home because we have people over for Christmas. Once or twice a year, we have a giant celebration at our house, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a 40 foot by 30 foot addition on our home so we can have a spot to have a celebration. No, what you do is you make it work. And I think we have enough common space to make it work. But again, I have no problem looking at something that may be a reasonable size or scaling it down. But I think when we get done with uh, the study for the election storage slash whatever equipment, I think it's going to be a monstrously sized building that's going to be exponentially bigger than we'll ever need to be. So that's my thoughts on that. Anybody members have any questions for Mr. Wilson? Do I understand that? Do you motion to have the study continued? <coughs> I cannot make the motion as chair. Steen would disagree with me, but I think Steen is wrong. Uh, I think we need to do, just as we do for the jail, I think we need to take this step to quantify it. So at least whether it's this group or the commission has a chance to at least have a scale. Well, I would recommend that we pass, that we tell the commission that this board recommends that the study be undertaken. Chair, second, please. Move and second in any discussion. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Anything else for A or B, Mr. Wilson? Nothing further. Outstanding. Item three, removal of juvenile courtroom bench and partition. You or Jean? I, Mr. Wilson? I, I guess. Oh. It's you pick. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the committee, and uh, uh, Mr. Gardner, jump in at any any point here. This is uh, This is something that I know... Um, uh, Gene's been uh, in contact very recently with, uh, uh, I believe it was Rod, uh, most recently on Karen, Karen Kringle. It, uh, it's been talked about since last summer uh, of a uh, really recommending that, uh, and, and what this would do is would give them more usable space in the current courtroom for what they currently need. Uh, looking to remove the, the judge's bench, remove the partition between the essentially gallery area and uh, and the uh, where the attorneys, the uh, 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 juvenile, the witnesses are, are gathered. Because my my understanding is that they are doing many more informal meetings, more uh, more conversations that that do not are not conducive to um, a, a traditional courtroom setting, and, and they just need more open common space where they can have that. Uh, and the, I, I don't think this is a particularly contentious uh, potential use right now, but just simply because it is a significant change to a county space, um, wanted to make sure that this comes before the, uh, 
before this committee and and has the, the the committee has an opportunity to weigh in on it and I would defer if, the, if uh, um, Gene had any more any more thoughts <clears throat> you know just uh, going over the project with Rod and uh, Karen um, it really became apparent to me that the space was not being utilized at all anymore uh, hardly the way it is um, they're, they're using it um, a little bit but not to not to its potential and <clears throat> this space could easily be you know made into a, a very nice workable space we do have the money for it uh, within our budget this year to to do it the, you're talking about minimal tear out doing a few extra things probably put some led lights in and stuff which we do in any project and um i think i think it's a great project and what's our budget uh, boy, I'd say to tear out and do some lights, a little bit of electrical. I'd be surprised if we hit seven thousand. Fire suppressed over there. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Committee members, uh, Commissioner Brighton. Can the materials that are taken out be stored, saved, and stored? Well, actually, like carpet will reuse because they're squares. I was thinking of the judge's bench and partition and some of it maybe, you know, because, you know, the, the problem with it is, is it's, it's designed for that area. And so to store it, I don't really have that kind of storage. I guess I could maybe see Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I have to be honest, it would be really a tough storage. To store it. I mean, it's it's really nice wood. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd certainly be open if uh, if I laid something next to the dumpster. Somebody wanted to grab it. You're certainly welcome to. I mean, it's it's very nice wood. We would do try to reuse some of the wood in different projects if I see that there's pieces that I can use. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion, committee members? I think we look for a motion to approve just to be formal about it, I would say. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Suppose same sign. Motion passes. Mr. Wilson, as it's part of your budget internally already, it shouldn't have to go to the commission, should it? Yeah, uh, that, well, done. We, we would probably take the take the PO to the uh, the finance office for uh, um, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. If it if it truly is seven grand, you just get it done. Yep. Okay. If it changes substantively, let our finance team know and let us know in the commission. We'll do. Item four, human service zone, zone layout update, and that's what we have within our packet two. Uh, again, Mr. Wilson, please. Yeah, and uh, there, there's a, I, I know I added a few different items to this uh, agenda item uh, for your uh, review, <clears throat> and uh, that was, um, this was originally going to be a commission item uh, a month ago, maybe two weeks ago, and we had a, a meeting that went extraordinarily long, and this was one of the items that was deferred. Uh, for, for this discussion. Um, really, I've, I've had a, a number of conversations with uh, Mr. Gardner and uh, 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 Ms. Kim Jacobson, uh, who is our in, one of our interim co-zone directors um, right now, and, and really talking about uh, the best layout for the annex building. Um, as we're moving forward, obviously, uh, zone, um, human service zone, uh, I think fair to say has the highest percentage of workers who have the ability to work remotely. Uh, and so where this was, when, when the, the space needs study that was included in the packet was completed at the end of 2016, there was really a very different focus at that point. And at that point, the focus was how do we make most efficient use of really every square foot in that building? Because at that time, the, uh, the department was adding, um, adding employees at a pretty quick clip and, and, and just trying to find room for office space for uh, employees and clients and, and most efficient um, work environment. Uh, substantially different now with the ability for more employees to work remotely. 
um, have more of a need for um, hoteling or space where uh, employees who most of the time work remotely occasionally need to come in, set up, work for a day or an afternoon, and have a, uh, a place that they can utilize, but, but they don't need a, a dedicated office space. Um, and so, um, you know, one of the, one of the benefits that, that we have had over the last couple of months with our co-interim zone directors, uh, Kim Jacobson and Lynn Fleeth, is they really bring a, 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 a human service zone perspective to everything we do over there. And that includes the physical layout of the, uh, the space. So they have uh, um, uh, made a couple of recommendations. Uh, I've had a number of conversations. Um, uh, Kim is on the uh, is joining us by teams uh, this afternoon and, and really could um, uh, uh, add her perspective to, to this conversation but really what we're looking to do is I engage the same firm that uh, that uh, prepared the space needs study um, uh, going on five years ago and say our, our needs are quite different now than they were at that point and we'd like to update um, the plan for this building. Uh, Kim, if you'd like to uh, uh, add on to that, would, would appreciate your thoughts. Absolutely. Good afternoon. Um, as, as mentioned by Mr. Wilson, the needs of the Human Service Zone have transformed quite considerably over recent years. Um, with, the, with the increase in telecommuting um, and also through redesign efforts, um, the Human Services Zone, under the leadership of the Department of Human Services, has gone through redesign in, in a variety of different program areas. Most significantly, economic assistance will be going through redesign. Well, we're currently in process of that and um, with it going live in early 2022. Um, with that, how we use space and how clients interact with us have changed. Um, while we were once much um, had a really strong client footprint, um, on a day-to-day -day basis with very full lobbies and waiting rooms, we now have a much stronger online presence. So really, um, the way that we utilize our space really has changed. However, there is a strong need for those individuals who are on site, who are often individuals who are, um, especially in the training and development phase of their position, for them to be um, connected together and have work units together with supervision and management nearby. So the recommendations that we have moving forward is to ensure that each work unit is on the same floor um, and that we also have space to accommodate telecommuters, um, hoteling space, and be able to better implement the te technological needs that we have. Um, also, we have a, a large number of state staff that are located um, within the zone. Um, the proposal that we would have would, would bring all state staff to the same floor to kind of have them operate in a pod, which would be convenient from a technology perspective um, and speaking with um, Terry Schmaltz and his team, um, but also in uh, and just to, to ensure that their footprint is, is adequate but does not seep or creep into that of the rest of the zone. Um, finally, there is also a need for um, administrative offices um, we had spoken earlier about the need for potentially an, an assistant director or, or um, COO for the zone. There would need to be space for that individual and to have more of an administrative hub office that would be um, an area that could where secure and confidential HR matters could be completed. So we thank you for your consideration of, of these efforts. Um, we, we believe that the space is adequate to accommodate all this. It just needs to be well planned. Wilson, anything further? Nothing further. Okay. Uh, I was thank you, Kim, for being here. Appreciate that. Uh, so long story short on this one, I couldn't agree more on the rethinking of what this building could and should be. I've struggled, and Gene and I have talked about this, Carrie and I have talked about this for a lot of years. It seems as though we did what we did. It is what it is, water over the bridge. Uh, I think we can do better. My struggle is that obviously Gene and Terry's not here, Terry's team, and whoever the next Terry will be, this potentially is a pretty heavy lift for you guys, logistically. Uh, I don't think it's as easy. I think it's needful. I don't think it's going to be as easy as anyone thinks it's going to be. Simply just pushing, you know, switching Sarah and John's office space and, you know, a couple entries to switch the phone numbers around. Uh, 
again, not to minimize it at all, but uh, I think that it's an important thing. We need to do it. I think we're going to find we have to do something over there. Uh, but I do think that we need to account for our staff time and their dedication towards this project. I think it's going to be bigger than we think it is, is my main point in this messaging. So uh, Mr. Wilson and I talked about this before. I think we should just go contract with Terry Stroh. Uh, he's the guy that designed the building originally. He's the guy that knows the building best. The learning curve, now while not an impossibility, and again, I have no, I'm not married to Terry Stroh in any which way or form. Uh, I just think that the learning curve over there might be a bit of a struggle for someone else coming in. Uh, I'm open to whatever Mr. Wilson and and our, and our social services team leader wants to do too, but uh, I just suggest for expediency and simplicity, that would be it. So with that, committee members, Commissioner Wright. Uh, a couple of questions. Do we need um, to run this by the state? Well, I... To get their approval of the redesign and ref refiguration of the department? You know, I, I'll look to, to Kim to uh, uh, follow up on my answer. My, uh, my initial answer would be that uh, we provide the box. Uh, and so, however, we can provide the, the office space in the most uh, efficient and best manner, that is, that is within our purview. And, and it's, it's also, uh, it, it's within our, our interest to um, you know, create a conducive environment for, the, for the, the state employees and the Cass County employees who, uh, who serve the zone. Uh, Kim may may want to follow up on that. I'm assuming that what you're saying is that the county is going to be responsible for the cost. Correct. And that's nowhere in in the budget, as, as I recall. Or am I you, mistaken? You are you are correct. I, uh, are we going to have to make some uh, significant budget adjustment in, in order to move forward like this? My, Even for the study? Yeah. Let me jump in. So the answer to that, Commissioner Breitling, is yes for the study and then maybe for the construction. We are not responsible to inform the state on anything we do. Again, as Mr. Wilson said it perfectly, it's our job to, to provide the box. However, out of a courtesy, we should at least tell them what we're up to. The logic being that if we were to somehow say, um, we're going to make a 700-story building with one office on each story, the state would then take umbrage with that and say, well, you're creating an inefficiency that we then have to fund. That's the only time I think they would have a reasonable or logical objection to whatever we want to do. I do think, like I said, out of courtesy, we should inform them. Near term, I think, with certainly with our $42 million windfall, we've got the resources at our beck and call to do whatever we need to do, uh, And which is why I said prior to, we've got not only a bigger investment, I think, and this isn't going to be $20 million. It's going to be you know hundreds of thousands, I think, maybe, uh, I guess I don't know. It's going to be some dollar figure bigger than a bread box. My concern is, again, staff time uh, should it push forward. So long story short, yes, we need to have some sort of an adjustment for the study, which I think is right and reasonable. And then secondly, I think what we do is figure out once this is done, it's going to take time to get this done. I think what we do is plan for this in the next budget year because we won't have anything done, in my mind, enough to act prior to us setting the budget anyway. So, and I could be wrong, don't know, but that's that's my gut is that Terry, we give Terry basically the the winter until summer. His goal should be to complete the study by the time we hit budget, and that study should include both programming and cost. We then account for that in our budget and push forward that way. Kim, I didn't mean to cut you off. Or do you have any thoughts, no. please? Yes, I, I do. If there would be anything that would be applicable to a reoccurring countywide cost allocation plan cost, then that may be um, reimbursable through um, the current zone structure. Um, no promises there. Typically, one-time costs are removed, but if there would be anything that would be ongoing type eligible expenses, so that would be something to work with Mac or to work with Maximus on or Abacus now. Um, regarding that potential eligibility if this project would be pursued. Um, also, I believe just from a standpoint regarding state notification, I think it's, you know, certainly as a good team partner to let them know that this will be happening. Certainly, if they know of any program type changes that might be helpful for um, CAS Human Service Zone to adapt in any way that, that they see that change is coming, um, that would be proactive. 
Um, and then furthermore, I just believe that, you know, from from Cass County's perspective, you want to provide the best environment for your for your citizens to access service. And so um, knowing that times and, and how government is served, um, it, there, it is certainly an interest of Cass County to consider that as well. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Chair, uh, members of the committee, I, I, the, certainly this would be a point for the, uh, the commission to consider whether they wanted to do this or not. But uh, I think you could make a strong argument for use of CARES funds uh, on, uh, on this project because, you know, that is, that is very much uh, COVID related. And, and while these are not directly tied to reacting to specifically public health or, or one of the uh, very specific carve outs within ARPA, um, we're looking at a different um, trend of, uh, of workforce uh, characteristics and, uh, and client uh, characteristics very much because of COVID. Uh, and uh, and so I, I think again that's a that's another decision entirely for the commission to make. But I think you could make a strong uh, strong argument uh, in that uh, in that direction. And if uh, and again those those funds are available and unencumbered. And if the uh, commission uh, chose to to go that direction, I think you could could accomplish this before we got to the the 2023 budget year, as you as you'd referenced earlier. Any further questions, committee members? Discussion? Looking for a motion that we recommend to the commission to move move forward. I would so move. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Mr. Wilson, anything else on item four? No. Item five, Davenport Shop. Mr. Benson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so we've completed the construction and occupied our new facility in Davenport. Right across the street is our old facility that uh, we're ready to dispose of. Um, there's a group of townships, uh, five townships in the southeast corner of the county that surround Davenport. And they've approached us and asked if we'd be willing to sell them uh, the buildings that they could uh, have their uh, motor grader operate out of there it would be a better central location right now i think some farmer down in richland county is storing it for them yeah probably and um <laughs> so you know just having to travel from richland county up to these locations is is a challenge and so um they they you know had offered that hundred twenty five thousand, or that's what they'd asked us for and so you know looking at it it seemed like that's generally a reasonable uh, value you know could we get more if we went on the open market and and you know, tried to sell it to try to get more maybe but ultimately it's probably a, a, a good uh, good show of uh, um, support for these townships and especially pleasant Norton Manor townships that have taken a brunt of the uh, effects of the diversion project. Remember, any thoughts? Only comment is that this is also on your uh, road advisory committee uh, agenda later this afternoon. Just uh, it, it had some dual impacts and wanted to, to have it on both agendas. So the, yeah, the, the motion, I guess, would be to, to move to have the authorize commission, authorize the commission. Um, recommend to the commission, recommend to the commission yeah, to sell it to this township group. Is there a, has, has Birch looked at this possibility as to whether or not there are any statutory restrictions as to our negotiating with these other governmental units? Uh, at this time, I haven't ran it past uh, Birch, I guess. In the, um, I think it's probably worth doing that. I, I can't think of any reason. You know, I think even if we were to to basically give it to them for a dollar, we could do that as a as another governmental organization. But I think it's worth double checking prior to bring it to the county commission. I I don't think there's any reason why we wouldn't 
fully engage our state's attorney and have them, uh, you know, completely up to speed and, and in approval of any purchase order uh, before we before we moved forward. I'm going to recommend that we request the commission to uh, to seek an opinion from the state's attorney's office as to what restrictions, if any, exist as to the disposition of this property. Is there a second, please? Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Let's pull the same sign. Motion passes. Mr. Benson, anything further on that one? Uh, okay, thank you. And then the uh, Highway Admin Office Remodel. We got a pretty big sketch that somebody gave us. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, just a little bit of background. Um, the Highway Department was remodeled in 1997. Then we had an addition, our vector addition added in 2005. Pretty much all the cubicles, office furniture, and wall coverings, uh, painting, uh, is all from that 1997, you know, outside of new, most everybody has a newer office chair, but, uh, uh, and the carpet was last done in, um, 2005. We're, we're definitely at over capacity. You know, our vector side has four offices and we have six employees on that side. And, um, and we're, uh, we're at capacity on the engineering side. So uh, with that, back in 2018, we had looked at a larger remodel uh, addition um, or kind of expansion to the engineering and highway office area. That included um, about uh, 12 additional office spaces. I think right now, based on other things that have gone on, we, that large of a uh, increase probably isn't uh, due, but but having some additional space, I think, is reasonable. And in building a built an addition that would only have fit the the needs of today for exact office spaces probably wouldn't be a wise investment. Knowing that we could add one or two more people in the future, and then we'd be back trying to figure out how to fit people in. Um, so, in in this drawing, and with that includes the full 12 spaces. I think we could probably eliminate six spaces that would bring down the square foot um, uh, scope of the addition. And um, it does centralize our, our engineering in one area. It gives the vector uh, set part of the building completely to vector for their four employees and, uh, and then has a separate planning area. It also uh, allows for a more streamlined inflow of the public into our office and a little bit more secure flow in uh, compared to how it is right now where people can just kind of walk in and disperse throughout the building. This would make them go through a door next to the, uh, the admin office um, as they come, come through. So those are the main changes. It really the expansion <coughs> would expand a little bit to the north and a little bit to the east of our current footprint. On this drawing, the, the red line is the current footprint of our building, and the blue would be the expansion. And then again, the, the offices that kind of have the, the circle with the slash would be the six offices that would be removed. And so really looking at you know, uh, three options. One, you know, to move forward with uh, updating the, the old um, kind of concept uh, from 2018 and and the cost analysis uh, in preparation for the 2023 budget uh, next summer. The other would be just to look at purely updating our furniture and cubicles and all that and trying to figure out how we're going to shoehorn everybody in. Um, and then having that for the for next summer uh, for the 2023 budget or to do both of those and bring them to the 20 to the uh, budget hearings next summer. Anything further, Mr. Benson? Okay, uh, that drawing's not in my packet here, but I actually had a chance to flip through this. Uh, let me start by saying I think we're doing a disservice by making it so small. I think what we need to do is we need to get with water resource, again, and I realize it's a bit of a headache for us, Mr. Wilson and I ran through this before, uh, and then with the Diversion Authority. This is where we need to be. This is the hub. This is the easiest access to everything 
We've got a massive site with a giant parking lot. I think this is where both water resource and diversion could be built. To me, that's a no-brainer, but what do I know? I just drop buildings and do planning. Uh, so my guess is we'll build a $20 million building out in the middle of a field somewhere that needs a septic system and somehow it's going to have a well to give it water. Anywho, uh, I think that that conversation needs to be had. And again, if for nothing else, then just to make them say no again uh, as a board and then diversion authority board as well. They may both say no, but I think it'd be not in our best interest to not do that. I do think something needs to happen at your office, Mr. Benson. I don't know if this is the exact answer, but looks pretty well thought out. Uh, I, I would hesitate, and I think you just talked about that. I was wondering, those little circles and slashes, I'm guessing those are your six offices you said you don't need right now. You, you don't build a building for today, you build it for some other time beyond today. And the amount of square footage you're gonna add with those six offices, call them 10 by 10, 12 by 12, whatever they're gonna be, I think you may find a use for them near term and especially allows you to have that space to grow long term. So. You'd be doing again yourself a disservice if you didn't drop those six offices in there. But uh, who drew this? You or one of your team members? Uh, this is the concept from Terry Stroh. Oh, well, this is for, okay. I don't remember Terry having it. Uh, this with this concept by eliminating the three or the six offices, we <coughs> still have three office spaces available for that four six um, But I, I agree. You know, looking long term, it's definitely. <clears throat> From a cost perspective, too, it's, it's better to, to have it expanded. Mr. Wilson, then Gene. And Mr. Um, just to your comment about uh, co-locating potentially with diversion authority offices as well, uh, Mr. Benson and I had that conversation, and uh, uh, and while it, it could be a valuable conversation, my, my understanding is that a DA building is part of the plan and uh, uh and the and the price tag i know with a uh, uh with a, a p3 developer so i where where you're there, there it absolutely could locate could co-locate i i think we're, we're already um essentially signed on to the cost of a, a new building and I, w I would defer any additional comments on that to to mr benson but just would would point that out Mr. Wilson, understood. Yep, okay. I'm not going down without a bit of a kick and screaming match. <laughs> I'm going to be a baby about this one. I just, it, it makes too much sense, the interaction. And less for the diversion than water resource. I mean, it just, renting a building on Main Avenue in West Fargo, I just, ugh, it is what it is. Uh, Mr. Gardner. So back when this study was done, uh, we were looking at chillers back then. My gut had told me that we would probably would end up having to do something at this building. So the the chiller was upsized. So we're we're, we're prepared to take on a uh, an addition of, of probably that size without having to uh, exert the extra money out of uh, for that kind of infrastructure. I believe the electrical was and the electrical upgraded. has been upgraded also. So so we've done steps to prepare <coughs> ourselves. Uh, we'd probably just look to um, <clears throat> take out the old boilers that were there and put in two, um, two new ones, two energy efficient ones. Where's the um, conference room? On this sketch right below planning, where there's a, a big white open uh, space. Is that your, that's, your, the, that's the current. There's another one next to it. No, that's, that's the vector one. Uh, just right, right above your right below the two ends in planning. Right there. Right. Yep. Uh, just below that. Below is that. The, yeah, there's is that the, blank. Space. What about to the west? To the west of that. What? What is that? The west of that is our sign shop. So you enter you that. You can't access that. You access that from the uh, from the south from the maintenance okay. base. That is chock full of nuts. That thing is. And there's a yeah between those two um, office areas, the um, the conference room and the sign shop. There, that wall has a bunch of stuff going through it. So, yeah, try, we, well, we looked at that. Yeah. yeah, there's too and many boiler challenges. pipes and chiller pipes. I think, honestly, one of the most important parts about this project is when I graduated college in 2000 or 1995, uh, it was both this re roofing this building that I did, uh, and I did a giant soybean plant. So. I, I take pride more in the roof than I do the gigantic 
whatever, a $50 million soybean plant. So uh, this roof means something to me. It's special. It's a special roof. It's a historical roof. It should be put on the historical record, maybe with this little star or something by it, uh, when I get turned out. Anyway, committee members, any objection to uh, proceeding with some sort of a study here, I think, would be my opinion. I only in to the commission to authorize the study. Second, please. Second. Moved and seconded, Mr. Wilson. Only comment I was going to make uh, is that when uh, uh, Jason and I kind of jump started this conversation a couple of weeks ago, it uh, it dawned on me that one of the major projects when I first came on board was for us to go through this building and the annex building and get, at the very least, to get uh, workspaces modernized and and uh, desks updated and and the the one that that didn't happen uh, the, the where area where that didn't happen was highway because we were considering a, an addition and then that hit the pause and and so the to, to say that some of the furniture there has uh, served us well for a long time is probably an understatement then. Yep, I think it's time uh, and again I think that that we can talk about re-engaging Terry Stroh on this and that may we may rethink that for human services but I think that He's 99% of the way there. For me, it's more of a, this motion is more of a, you know, authorization, sure, but it's something we need to engage with our friends, our water resource friends, and our diversion authority friends, too. So uh, with that, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Motion passes. Uh, item 7, Mr. Wilson. Um. One of the things that we uh, typically do at one of the de December meetings is uh, approve a uh, 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 courthouse improvement grant application. And uh, we uh, uh, submitted a pro project last year that was not um, approved by uh, um, the um, Supreme Court, I, I, the, the court statewide uh, court administration. And so there's still a need there for a uh, third floor um, jury assembly room uh, that can also really double as a, uh, a, a, a virtual courtroom and, and then build off some bathrooms uh, off the, the side of that. And so we'd look to resubmit that application. Uh, and then in, in addition to that, there is a, a kind of a late uh, uh, potential addition that uh, uh, added pro added application that uh, we may bring forward that uh, 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 Megan you might want to just update the uh, um, uh, the committee on of uh, rolling windows uh, in the clerk's office very similar to what we have in the finance office is the the current ones are, are having some challenges yeah, we have three large uh, windows that we have to hand crank up and down morning and in the afternoon and then we We've had um, some small problems in the past. They're very, they're quite old um, with them working correctly with the hand cranking and the locks. Um, and then also, um, it is something like if there is a fire or if there is like a shooter or an active shooter, one of my clerks does have to stay behind and hand crank those down if there is an emergency like that. Um, so it is in the best interest for my office if we could get automatic ones. I think a lot of people would really like that. Um, but uh, personally, this jury room in 306 or old 306 would be our number one priority. But then that would just be like a second core facility grant request if that's an option. And we would we would look to, to bring these forward as uh, as commission uh, agenda items, uh, presumably at the first. December meeting on, on the 6th. Do you have any reason for the approval of the original application for the grant? We, we the, the I feed, think I brought this up quite a few times. The, 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 the feedback, the just got the money. you know, the, the feedback, uh, the, the only feedback we got was that we were, our application was denied pending Burley County full utilization of, um, uh, of funds for a different project. And uh, if by chance they had not utilized them, 
we we would have um, had an opportunity, but we they they utilized them, and so those funds were not available. So we've you know I think we've gone a couple of years now without receiving one of these um, applications. So I would I would be so so bold as to say we're due. Yeah, I, I think the important messaging is that it wasn't you know if this is a terrible idea, we don't endorse it. It's a matter of limited resources, which one can debate about whether our resources are limited on a state. Anywho, uh, I do think we should reapply. I think, frankly, if we can get a quantity or somehow quantify the other item, Mr. Gardner, I don't know how you do that. The, the windows? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I could probably, uh, I'm going to be meeting with Mr. Uh, Jeff Vanio coming up here. Actually, I think on Thursday it is. And so maybe I'll run through with him because I think they were the ones that did uh, the finance office. And so we would probably look to... Um, Hurry up and see if I can grab it somewhat of a price out of the air and at least give us a ballpark. Of yeah, and somehow quantify it, whether it's written form. I don't know how you draw it. So quantify it so Mr. Wilson has some substance to be able to submit where someone can, you know, be able to read and comprehend something tangible. That the windows that are in there, um, you know, they are that bad. Uh, what she says, um, I've actually... There again, had to steal parts out of old windows that aren't being used to make hers work. So I mean, <clears throat> although you don't have to stay if there's a fire to roll them down, just leave. That's what we've been told. <laughs> no, <laughs> if there's flames, leave. Flames. <laughs> <laughs> just want to interject that quickly. <laughs> Burn. Uh, committee members, any objection? I guess we look for a motion to uh, forward to the commission both the. I, my thought is both these projects, but. Uh, it's up to the committee, so. So move. Or second, please. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Mr. Wilson, anything else? Yeah, we'll look at the clock. What do we want to talk about for six minutes? I, <laughs> I, I don't have anything. The pen. That's my pen tapping. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, item eight, please. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. We stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for being part of what's going to be a long day for some of us. <laughs> right. yeah. Do you want to have